The time I have is 6.32 on this, uh, June 27th of 2017. Um, and, uh, uh, I have here the agenda for a city council special call meeting. Um, and the, the first order of business is to call to order, so that's what I'm doing right now, calling the meeting to order. Um, and the second agenda item number two is conduct a public hearing regarding a voluntary annexation request by the owner agent of a 16.27 acre property being described as part of the James McKinney survey, abstract number 770, Grayson County, Texas, and being a part of Greywood Heights, in addition to Grayson County, Texas, as recorded in volume 7, page 87, Plant Records, Grayson County, Texas, and being a part of Greywood Heights, section 2, to the city of Van Alstine, Grayson County, Texas, as recorded in volume 8, page 70, of said Plant Records, and being part of the tract of land described in a deed to Caratex LP, um, 11s uh, recorded in Grayson County or, or County Clerk file number 2010-21778 uh, real property records Grayson County Texas generally located south of Spence Road east of Sanford Circle west of Greywood Drive and north of Blasting Game Avenue um, do we have any uh, questions or comments from the public See no hands. Um, second call for questions or comments from the public. Still no Excuse hands. Me, Mayor. I just wanted to identify. We do have an annexation service plan for the property, and I have several copies here. I'm just going to place on the table if anybody would like to look at them out, whichever you prefer. Basically, that's a, that's a list of the services that the city would provide. Um, to anyone that wants their property in it. I'll let her pass those out. Call for questions again. So um, the third and last call for questions or comments regarding agenda item number two from the public. All right. um, any comments or questions from the council regarding this yet? We'll be covering it again in a minute. All right. And so um, the third item is adjournment of this 6.30 p.m. session. Um, and uh, then we will call the next meeting to order. Um, is there a, a motion? Okay, we have a motion to adjourn and a second. <coughs> All in favor of adjournment at this time? Uh, it is unanimous. So we will adjourn the 6.30 p.m. meeting and the time is 6.36. And so at 6.36 on this 27th of June 2017, um, I have a, uh, another agenda for another City Council special call to meeting. Um, and uh, the first item is called to order. That's what I'm doing now. Second item, agenda item number two, public hearings. Um, conduct a public hearing regarding a voluntary annexation request by the owner agent of a 16.27 acre property being described as part of the James McKinney survey, abstract number 770, Grayson County, Texas, and being a part of Braywood Heights in addition to Grayson County, Texas, as recorded in Volume 7, page 87, Platt Records, Grayson County, Texas, and being part of the Greywood Heights, Section 2, to the City of Van Alstine, Grayson County, Texas, as recorded in Volume 8, page 70 of said Platt Records, and being part of the tract of land described in a deed to Caratex LP 11s, recorded in uh, County Clerk File Number 2010-21778, Real Property Records, Grayson County, Texas, generally located south of Spence Road, east of Sanford Circle, west of Greywood Drive, and north of Blasting Avenue. 
Um, so regarding um, uh, number, item number two in this public hearing, uh, once again, uh, are there any comments or questions? Is this the same property that we just no, it's it's not. Okay. It's not the same. It, or is it, is it part of it? I don't think. A portion. It is a it is part of it. Part of it's, it's a portion of it. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments? All right. That was the second call. Third and last call for uh, comments, questions from the public. How does this fit within the master plan for Van Alstine, or does it? Pardon me. How does this fit within the master plan for Van Alstine, or does it? Um, well, I think it it, it, it was um, it was planted as 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 um, mostly resi uh, single family residential, but there was some multifamily too. This was, uh, and, and I'm not sure where it divides. This was just discussed um, in the, the meeting of the planning and zoning. Though though that was a bigger piece of property that contains a smaller piece of property. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure um, how much of it used to be or or, or still is actually. That uh, that um, request was denied by the by the planning and zoning commission, um, but uh, it's it's mixed. It's I think it's mostly single family residential, some multifamily, some uh, um, was it was two the duplex, two family. Two okay. So I, does that help you? Does that answer your question? Someone. And third and last call for questions or comments. All right. Seeing no hands, we move on to uh, items for consideration. Uh, item number three: Consider and take any action necessary regarding hiring a community development corporation director, and the city and, and the city entering into an interlocal agreement with the VACDC. That's the Van Alstine Community Development Corporation. Related to uh, funding such a position, all right, is anyone um, prepared to speak on that? Did you want to say anything, Colin? Uh, Colin Flynn. Hi, I'm uh, Colin Flynn, the uh, president of the CDC. And, uh, you know, we, we've been without a uh, director for some time now. I guess it was the end of uh, April um, that uh, our uh, the person who was handling that, that position, which was not titled director at the time, but resigned. So we've, we've, uh, we've been going through a, a number of uh, uh, special called meetings in an effort to, to find an applicant. We had uh, six um, applications and held three interviews uh, for the director position. Um, we feel like, uh, you know, in, in all this, We've uh, found the, the perfect candidate who, who's going to really be there and uh, help us out. So we, we stand strongly behind our, our candidate, Rodney Williams, who's here today. Um, as far as the uh, city uh, uh, employment uh, goes, uh, you know, 18 months ago we had one person who was handling the CDC and the EDC. Uh, it was a different world here in Van Alstine, you know, two years ago. There, there's been a lot of, of growth since then and a, a lot of responsibility for that individual it, it would be. So since that time, the EDC now has a director. And they, this is all new territory for the EDC, the CDC, and the city. The, the city uh, employed the director so that they could provide benefits and could go through the uh, process of, of uh, background checks and, and, and go through the, the, the standards that the city goes through in hiring their employees. We, we felt that um, that adds value uh, for what we're trying to do for the city, the, the Community Development Corporation, to um, uh, utilize the professionalism and, and, and what they're doing in their evaluation of employees. So we thought that was a good option for us. Um, the uh, EDC, again, is ahead of us in this. They've already uh, had an agreement with the city. They've been through some, some you know, it's evolving. And, you know, as we learn of, of things that are working and aren't working, which I don't know the details of it, you know, we're, we're with, with our director going to be able to benefit from what they're going through so that we ultimately have a perfect uh, 
scenario here where the employee is uh, managed and uh, all, all you know, operations that will be at the, uh, the board level, but that we're able to provide benefits that the city can provide uh, their employees. Um, one of the thoughts were, should we uh, approach a third party um, a provider for benefits? And after further discussion with the board, you know, the city has a number of employees and they're very competitive with what uh, benefits they're able to provide because, uh, you know, this is all coming out of the CDC budget. We want to be sure that, you know, we're, we're good stewards of, of, of the funds that are available to us. And we feel like uh, our, our best option today is to follow that EDC's agreement and have the city handle the payroll and be a city employee providing benefits, but the uh, CDC board will handle all of the day-to-day -day management of, of that uh, director. Been a, I, I'm not, not going to uh, pretend that this has not been a, a huge challenge for the CDC without having a, a director or a person on uh, employee who can assist us with, with the, all the things that we're doing. So we've had a number of special called meetings. We've got uh, members who are coming in uh, to the office during the week and are taking away from their day-to-day -day positions and, and really going above and beyond. I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of this board for their efforts uh, in this time. Um, we had a, uh, a special call meeting where we voted that Rodney Williams was the right man for this job and that we would uh, move forward with the hiring process. And in that we understood that city council had to be the ultimate vote. So between the last CDC meeting and this meeting, we were made aware of this meeting because Wayne uh, Womack is on p and He was at a P&Z meeting, was able to talk to Jennifer Gould uh, when he found out about this special call meeting and it became an opportunity for us to proactively try to get ahead of the, you know, get this done sooner than later. Um, you know, in our opinion, you know, the sooner we would have hired Rodney, uh, the, you know, way earlier, but you know we had six inter uh, we had six applications, three interviews, and uh, it just took time to, to, to find the right one. And once we did, we saw this as an opportunity to uh, move forward and really start putting our you know uh, plans into action for the CDC. But when did you submit your request? The your uh, request as required for anything that goes on in council agenda. Yeah, the, um, the initial request was made verbally by Wayne Womack to Jennifer Gould, letting her know that we would like to look into getting on the agenda for the special call meeting regarding our uh, director and our admin. That was on uh, the 21st, uh, the last PNZ meeting. Uh, Frank Baker called me the next day and asked me, confirmed, is this uh, the intention or by the board to, to go before city council at the next city council at the special call meeting. I said yes. And so uh, at that point, uh, Jennifer uh, proceeded with the request. I, I didn't, uh, uh, I, I guess if, if, if there is a um, requirement that every um, uh, submittal be in writing, I, I wasn't aware of that. And I, I felt that in an effort to continue working together. It's a benefit of being a 
with the CDC board. We're, work closely with the city, we work closely with city council, we work closely with the EDC, and we can try to get things done effectively. This was just an opportunity for us to get in front of y'all and try to really get the, the, the... So you were not made aware that you needed to submit a written request for this, or that, that we needed a packet that stated that the board had approved what was being presented to the council of the minutes, approved minutes? Um, I mean, I, I felt that Jennifer Gould could uh, do the request. I mean, if, if, if it needed to be for me, no, I was not aware that it had to be in writing. Um, but uh, we felt that we were taking all the right uh, steps uh, to, again, proactively move forward. Um, our uh, board voted uh, in our meeting. Uh, on all, all this was done uh, as, as it's supposed to in, in board uh in the board and, and so we felt like uh, we've we've been following the, the rules here and, and doing as we're uh, expected so then you were never uh, even aware that you needed to make a written request as other boards are required to do no i i i guess uh i guess not i mean we we yeah. No. Usually no, they are wasn't. required to make a written request and on it you must list and you want it worded on the agenda. And each board that does that, you must also submit the minutes of the board to show that you uh, that the board did vote and this is how they wanted it worded and that they approved it. This is not against the CDC board. This is a matter of if one board is required follow a procedure that all boards should be required to follow the same procedure. If there's a procedure... And that is what my, my question is in regard to this, as we did not... The only thing we got was to request and then the, uh, the employment agreement uh, from each one. And I also have another question. This is not... Uh, totally covered in the bylaws, did you make a, uh, has an attempt been made to change the bylaws and correct them according to the way you are, the employee is to be done? We have not made any amendments to the bylaws. Okay. I noticed in this that the council has, uh, um, in the bylaw section one, AF page two, the employee can be removed from office by the city. But if in uh, your service agreement, even though that this is a city employee, the council has no say in any of that. Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'd have to refer to it. Is that the, the agreement that's with, in place with the EDC and the city that we're mirroring? This is, this is the C this is what you gave us, the city employment service agreement that was sent to us. I assume that this is this is um, I I don't know who threw it up. I do know that I read this and it was an email from Julie Ford, which is our attorney, and that you asked her to review this request and she did state that uh, one council member has asked for the legality of the BAEDC agreement, and I assume the same legality questions will arise about this agreement. Do you not think it would be advisable to wait until those questions are answered before this is continued? If there are, you know, we... we um... And this is not my words. This is from you. You know, we, we were, uh, again, um, following the, the lead of the EDC in the city and, and in an effort to continue moving forward and finding the perfect fit, uh, we <coughs> voted to follow the same uh, agreement. So if, if there was any legal questions regarding the EDC and city agreement that are pending, that could potentially change the, the 
the way the agreement is written, then we, we definitely need to be aware of that and we don't want to, you know, our, our idea is not to uh, cause any kind of problems. We, we, we see the benefit of utilizing uh, the city's services here where, where they're available. And if there's details in the agreement that are a concern to the attorney, then, then we need to know about that. Uh, Would it be a hardship on you in any way if this, these two actions were postponed and tabled until the regular council meeting? I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, I've got about I've got, a week and two, two weeks at the very most. I've got most of the board here tonight. Um, Rodney's here and, and he has a, a current job that he's, you know, where he's working. Part of the concern of, that I had for him is once we go to uh, city council and your name goes out there, you know, he's got to explain it to his employer that he's been looking at another job. I think that puts him in a tough spot. I, I understand what, what your concerns are, but I also feel that we have such a well-rounded board. We've got a city council member, member on our board, PNZ member, and a number of other outstanding citizens. And uh, we've, we've, we've really looked at all of our, you know, we've, we've put a lot of thought and effort into this. If there's any issues regarding the agreement, those can be worked out. I mean, you know, it, it, I think it would be our opinion that we, if at all possible, move forward and get going here with the CDC. And if there's any issues with the agreement on, on how it's handled, that we, we, we handle that as, as we move, as we go forward. Um, that's, that's just my opinion. I think if anybody from the CDC would like to speak on, on that note, uh, I'm, that's my opinion, and after meeting with the board for so many meetings, I think they would all agree. Well, I'll say a question. I just have a question. Uh, what's the position of the CDC, whoever that was, administrator, now director? Roles and responsibilities that position, I believe, kind of changed a little bit over time. So if you could just kind of describe the role and responsibility of this role, of this position. Yeah. Um, Give me a second here. The uh, the roles and responsibility of the uh, community development director have have uh, they've gone up. It's, it's a it's a bigger job today. Uh, and all seems growing. Uh, you know, we, we've seen the things that the economic development director has, has done regarding uh, industrial and manufacturing and trying to bring job creations here to Van Alstine. The Community Development Corporation is focused on improving the quality of life here. We've got a number of outstanding uh, projects with uh, uh, shade programs over parks for the kids to, uh, you know, keep them from getting sunburned, facade infrastructure programs, hike and bike trails. And in addition to that, uh, seeing where uh, the community is, are we missing retail? You know, we've lost our um, hardware store, for instance. You know, it's, it's gonna be our responsibility, the director's responsibility to see what we're missing in Van Alstine, such as a hardware store, proactively go target uh, those type of uh, operators and, and try to bring them to Van Alstine. This hardware store is one example. But that would be on a, on a retail and, and commercial kind of basis. So I'll just read the, the, the summary of our, of our job description for our director. To provide leadership of the Community Development Corporation. The CDC is a not-for-profit organization incorporated to provide programs, offer services, and engage in other activities that promote and support Van Alstine. Specifically, it's tasked with developing the retail and commercial space of Van Alstine in addition to providing for improvements to the city, such as parks, green space, bike trails, etc., Duties include working with new businesses, including commercial, office, and retail, doing all we can uh, to attract them to Van Alstine. The director will be responsible for bringing in retail commercial businesses to the city, budgeting, marketing, prospect development, negotiations, business retention, oversee administrative assistant, 
and appropriate reporting of activities to the stakeholders and the board. So uh, that's maybe a little more than you asked for, but appreciate it. Thank you. Is your, your bylaws, they don't in any way preclude you hiring a person, do they? I mean, they don't say that you can't. They just don't address it either way. Is that correct? You know, I, I don't have the bylaws in front of me. I believe that is correct. Sir. I've got something. I've got something I need to read before we go from the other here. Uh, Susan, Susan can't be here today, so she asked me to read this for city council for the council's um, uh, information. Uh, Suzanne Crow could not be here tonight, but has asked that I read this statement to you with regard to the agenda item, items on hiring the two CDC employees. Because the council has not received job descriptions, salary information, or at time to review the contractual agreement between EDC and the city, I believe that the two agenda items on the CDC hiring to be postponed until July 11th. Council meeting, at which time I would expect the council would have the necessary information to make the appropriate decision. Thank you. So that is from Suzanne. I just got one question. When are you looking to have your gentleman start? Our, uh, our goal was uh, July 3rd. Uh, the 4th is a, a holiday and uh, that would uh, provide him time with the quiet office to get his feet on the ground and kind of get a feel for the office itself and um, we, we just we're ready to uh, get, get started with this you know we, we've been it's been too long it's been a hard uh, uh it's been a big challenge for us we're, we're very excited about it and any of the details that we're talking about we're looking forward to providing uh, but we've, we've, we've done our due diligence and we've spent our time as a board representing what we're we were asked to do and i think we've done a very well job okay so with today with wednesday thursday friday left in the week and monday of next week week before he's to start on you said the third so we had the third so third so we've got three days could we could we forward julie to address your issues for Julie, the agreement, have her run through it so that everything's happy go lucky. It is it my understanding that you have hired Rodney, which I have no objections to, that you have already done it. So it's it's not an issue of whether you hire him or not. The issue is the other that we would like more information regarding this. So I don't see the that it would make a difference since we already know who the employee is. And that you said earlier that you had already decided and hired him. Well, so uh, all we're asking is time to see the background information and review it. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, was, I felt that, uh, and I, I don't know exactly, but that the city council, he wasn't officially hired until city council voted him in so you but, have uh, i have the bylaws and you do have the authority to yeah you have this. the authority but at this point in time we do not want him to be a cdc employee but we prefer to have him be a city employee because we can't offer benefits at the cdc we have to go outside and get third-party insurance which we then could not afford we couldn't be competitive with that offer that's the reason why we prefer to have the administrative duties handled by the city as far as employment is concerned. So, so if, if we're going to hire him to the city by third. So that would be with any anyone that you hire, though. I mean, that would be any of the hiring process. Mayor, the agreement that's sitting in your packet was reviewed by legal, was prepared by legal. So if there's any concerns from legal, they haven't been raised since your package was sent to you. This concern I have is dated Friday, June the 23rd, when which was the, when the packets went out, and it is from our attorney if you would like to see it. I I'm assume you got a copy of it. I'm just stating the fact that legal has reviewed and prepared 
the agreements. And, and to back up just a little bit, Mr. Flynn, as far as funding goes, um, uh, though the city's going to write checks, they are going to be reimbursed for, for all the money. In other words, CDC is going to be using its assets to pay your, your, uh, your director. Yes, and we'll be benefiting from the uh, benefits being uh, provided at a lower cost to us uh, by utilizing the city uh, services, which was a big part of, of this, in addition to uh, all, all of the uh, financial uh, accounting uh, that goes on with having an employee, um, because the city already has those services available. Uh, we felt like this was the best use of our budget. We, we did go through the budget and, and come up with uh, a, a number that is within our budget to finish this year and then uh, we're going to be in the process of budgeting for next year so we took into account the, the you know the funds available in the budget this year and and i assume you're being billed for the legal work that the attorney get, does is it states in the bylaws that you will be yes sir yes on top of that the, the concern i would have from my side as a tax person is if we hired Rodney separately first as a CDC employee, you'd be getting a W-2 from the CDC, and then later on, if you became a city employee, you'd be getting a second W-2 from the city, basically for the same position. Uh, on top of that, then we have the requirement of handling all the administrative duties and making sure the tax deposits are done, the tax, Texas Workforce Commission is being handled, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. board and when we came up to this decision we were all unified as this as, as Colin said this is the this is the right man for the job we thought we had addressed all of the issues uh, we some of us were uh, have uh, been to uh, some of the EDC meetings and have heard some of the issues that they have with their employee slash city employee uh, as the director there and I was at the EDC meeting last night and witnessed some of those problems and they stem from her being a city employee even though she's supposed to be reporting to the EDC board and without going into any detail I think we need to have this hammered out before we take him on because I don't want to subject him to that to where he gets in there and two weeks later he says I'm not messing with this you know this is for his protection it's for the CDC board's protection it's for the city's protection so I think you know we know that this is the man we know that we're going to hire him as soon as we get these issues ironed out which if it takes two weeks I hope that's okay you know if we can get it approved at the July 11th regular council meeting, I sure hope it doesn't jeopardize your your employment. Okay, I mean we'll keep it as quiet as we can. <laughs> but um, that would be my recommendation. If I may, um, the big problem I think stemmed from the fact that in effect um, the EDC employee, the director, had two supervisors: the city and the EDC board or the EDC board chairman. Um, now I think that's already, it's already been decided that the EDC uh, board director only has one supervisor now and that's, that's the board or the chairman of the board and the city no longer supervises. Um, is, that, is that a fair statement? It is. All right. And so is that how you intend to do things for the CDC? That's, that's the uh, agreement that we went in with the city. Um, 
I mentioned that you know the EDC is, was first in to do this, and it was a teething exercise, and there were things that, that could not be foreseen. Everybody's trying to put forth their best effort here, and things that occurred happened. And we learned from our mistakes that what's happened to the EDC, we, we watched everybody's witness, and so our agreement is their revised agreement that puts the, all the management responsibility on the board which we thought would take care of, of these issues. If, if there's additional issues that are happening with that agreement that we could potentially become victims of or be a part of, I shouldn't say victims because all of us are just trying to come up with the best uh, business partnership here. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just a, if, those are, if that's the case, you know, we, we, we want to know about it and, and work our way and assist in how we can to not be a part of that and, and try to iron this out. Mr. Jessica, did you have something else? I thought you raised your hand. Oh, I thought you had another question. Well, my, my concern was, yes, the, the EDC revised their agreement, and I am going to go into a little detail here. When questions were arisen, they were deferred or, or not answered because the answer the, the reason given was because she was a sick employee. Okay, that is on the record from last time. That's what I don't want us to be caught up into. So if there's any risk of that, I want it to be gone. You know, I want this to be clean, concise, defined, and everything, you know, like I say, all I's dotted, T's crossed. So that's why. So, I guess that would be a, a motion that we uh, would that be table the table with until the regular council meeting on July 11th, so that we can gather the correct information to make the right decision. I mean, decision decisions are already made, which means we want we're going to hire him, but to make sure all the issues are cleaned up. That's, that's the reason to uh, make that motion. All right, we have a motion to uh, to table this and put this decision off until the regular council meeting, and we have a second. Um, all in favor of tabling this? We have two in favor. All, right, all opposed? Two opposed. The, the vote is a tie. Um, Ms. Ms. Kroll is, is not present, and so uh, that means that um, uh, I get to, cut, to cast the, uh, the vote that breaks the tie. Um, and I, uh, I, I vote against putting this off. I would like to make a decision this evening. And so, uh, is there a motion? Um, uh, uh, can we talk a little bit more? Going through this agreement again, this is agreement between CDC and the city, right? Entire integrated agreement between the CDC and the city regarding the director position. So this agreement is between the CDC and the city, not your individual in the city. The city falls under the employment of the city, the city of Austin, right? Do I agree with that? Agree with that? Okay. So it says CDC is going to reimburse us for him. There's nowhere, in, the only place in here that says the city can terminate the individual is because of suspended contract without an integration notice for non appropriation of funds for the position is subject to annual budgetary approval of city council. So that's the only reason, yes, we have to, yes, the city council has to agree on who we hire. And of course, should we terminate? But this is between us and the CDC, and this just says we don't have. To me, I interpret it as you will be controlling your director and his actions. There and two, you're just utilizing the buying power of the city for health care benefits and to make a competitive price. That's, that's it. Correct. So, 
we get the benefit of y'all having a director. Y'all get the benefit of buying power. But y'all control it. There's nowhere in this agreement that I, that I see that we have authority to hire and fire. Right. Which is, which is I'm fine with because I believe this separates us from well, what you were saying with the EDC and the issue that had raised there. However, there has to be a change in the bylaws because in the bylaws, we did have some authority. Yes, ma'am. something on the agenda for the July 11th meeting to, to amend the bylaws to subcommittee report committee employees utilizing buying power of the city benefits. <coughs> and it's, no, it's no different than if you were going to do bulk pine concierge medicine. All right, then, so is there a motion? Um, to take the action necessary, and it's already hired, but take the action necessary hiring a community development corporation director um, and the city entering into an interlocal agreement with the BACDC related to, to funding such position. Do I have a motion to approve that? Okay. Okay. I'll make the motion. Uh, I think there's a little more point of discussion on that. So. We're looking at, whereas the CDC administrative assistant shall be hired and supervised. Uh, to me, I also see conflict resolution and all those types of things under the item of supervised that they're taking on those roles and responsibilities. So I'm, I'll make a motion that we approve. All right, we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a second. All in favor? Two in favor, all opposed? Two opposed. Once again, there's a tie. And to break the tie, um, I'm in favor of uh, approval of uh, item number three. So we'll move on to item number four. Consider and take any action necessary regarding hiring a community development corporation administrative assistant, different job, administrative assistant, and the city entering into an interlocal agreement with VACDC related to funding such position. Um, and, uh, I think probably the, the arguments for and against are, are most likely the same. Does anyone have any uh, commentary? Any questions or comments on this one? Yes, okay. sir. So, like my previous question about roles and responsibilities, I just wanted to give a little clarification on administrative assistant responsibility. Yeah, um, one of the things that uh, we found um, in, in the, the previous arrangement was that our um, employee was really bogged down with administrative duties and was unable to uh, proactively go and, and, and be the face of the CDC and bring in um, businesses like we talked about uh, being such a, a big importance uh, with our, our job at the CDC. And we don't want to set the, our next employee, our director up with the same uh, challenges. So um, we have a uh, administrative assistant uh, that we also uh, had a job posting for uh, with the same timing as, as our director. And uh, the job duties uh, provide part-time administrative support to the Van Alstein Community Development Corporation, Board of Directors, and the Community Development Director. Duties include general, clerical, receptionist, and project-based work. Mo uh, must project a professional image through business casual dress and proper etiquette. The individual is in this position must be self-motivated, discreet, and able to maintain confidentiality. Um, so uh, we really uh, are trying to put, we feel like we've put together the ultimate team to um, really take advantage of the growth that's coming to Van Alstein, really seek uh, the type of uh, companies that the citizens would like uh, to see here without dropping the ball on parks projects and, and shade programs that are so important for the families that already live here with the children. Um, and not to mention the grant uh, opportunities that, that the state has. Um, we, we don't want to let anything fall through the cracks and with all the growth that's headed this way, 
we feel like the administrative assistant is going to be uh, very important uh, to allow the director to really go out there. Has the assistant already been hired too? Uh, through the, the same process as the director. I mean, I, I was uh, of the impression that it had to be an ultimate vote by the city council before it was official. But um, I don't think they've been given a, a, a letter, a note. Uh, so we we're really waiting for this city council meeting to, to make it an official. To further uh, explain, uh, the administrative assistant is part-time limited hours, does not require benefits, so therefore it's different in that regard to where she's not going to be a city employee, she's going to be an employee of the city of Correct? No, she should be a city employee. Yes. Yes, because, yes. Because why? The, the, the exact same reason. You, so she gets you don't want the, you No, don't she, want doesn't. Her, she doesn't get benefits. You, you don't want that person doing their own payroll checks and everything out there. That's sort of separation of duty thing that you said not that we have two employees of the CDC, one can see the city one, city one, the CDC. But if, if she's contract, she's just going to be a 1099. You don't want to give her a 1099. You don't want to go there. I, as a tax person, I wouldn't do that to my worst enemy. No, she, she, does, she does not have benefits, does she? No. No, she did not have been, not a 10 hours a week. She's no responsible for full-time employees, so she wouldn't give you a full-time benefit. It's the same with this. Teddy, it's the same agreement, because the agreement is just for the reimbursement of the employee from the city. Yes, she, she does. Uh, I was thinking earlier that she could uh, have the same benefit. It does not say in here that she is part time. Uh, Since we're working less than 19 hours a week. Section 3, city obligations. You get 19 and you have to provide benefits. Thank you. 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 I guess it leaves a little bit bookended in case workload gets to the point, city grows, you have that same person in place where eventually if they are full time, they can't get those things years down the road whenever the new work arrives. And, and on the flip side of that, if uh, you know, right out of the chute, there's going to be a, a lot of work to, to get caught up and, and uh, kind of get back to, to a, a, a good, solid, proactive foundation. If we determine that things aren't moving, as, I mean, the market's changing, but with an, uh, uh, a, a part-time uh, we can go either way with that if, if we find that she's not needing uh, to spend as much time the director can take on some of those roles and you know so you know there's review periods that we're going to be having with our employees as we move forward as well I mean this is this is new for us uh, too to have uh, two employees and uh, we again are all, all very aware of, of the fact that we're spending taxpayers money which is what our budget is <coughs> We're, we're trying to, to be the best stewards that we can of that. Um, so we've, we've taken all that into consideration, and, and that's true. That if, if the time comes and the, there's more load needed, we can address that at that time or, or vice versa. Mr. Paul, I'm sorry. I, I know you, obviously, you have questions. Did you, did you make a motion? I did not. Okay. Um, is there more discussion? Any, any more questions? Or uh, I would entertain a motion. Regarding uh, issue number four, I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? We have a second. All in favor? Um, we have two in favor. All opposed? And, um, the, once again, the vote is split. Um, it's a tie vote. And um, I will vote in favor of. Uh, taking action necessary regarding hiring a CDC administrative assistant and the city entering entering into an interlocal agreement with uh, Van Alstine CDC related to funding such a position. Uh, and so the, the motion carries. Uh, and uh, the next item is uh, adjournment. Uh, motion All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Uh,
Do I have a second? Do I have a second? All in favor? All right, it's unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone.